Hey guys, and welcome to this quick tutorial for Open Broadcaster software. I'm currently using version 0.452 alpha, so in the future, you know, things might change a little bit, but hopefully this should say a good little guide for helping people getting started with streaming. Jumping right into things, first off we have our OBS window here. This big gray square is our preview window. If you resize OBS, that will change the size of the preview. And down here we have boxes for our scenes and sources. Sources are the actual things that you're going to be showing on stream, such as your game or text or any images. And scenes are your compilation of multiple sources. You can have as many scenes and sources as you want. To uh, add a new scene, you just right click in the scenes box. You can add a scene. It'll have this default little name. You can give it whatever you want. And to switch between scenes, all you have to do is click them. If you right click, you have a few options. You can either delete it, you can move it up or down the list, you can move it to the top or bottom of the list, you can rename it, and you can set a hotkey for it for easily switching to it. For sources, just the same. You right click, you'll bring up this little menu where you can choose what source you want to add. You can add software capture, which lets you show a monitor or a region of a monitor, or also just a specific window or a region of a window. Uh, if you're going to do a monitor capture, uh, you're going to want to make sure that you have arrow disabled or it's going to be very laggy. If you're running Windows 8, in the current version of OBS, monitor capture will be very laggy because you can't disable arrow in Windows 8. But in a future version, Windows 8 will have a specific version of monitor capture that works really, really well for it and really fast. Uh, window capture lets you specify a specific window. I'm going to choose Minesweeper over here. And you can either do the inner window or the entire window. Uh, down here, you can choose to capture the cursor. You can choose if you need to capture a layered window. You can set a subregion. You can click here and you can specify the area. You can chroma key it and you can set the opacity. So I'm going to do a window capture of the entire window of Minesweeper. Uh, I'll click that and you can see that I still have a gray screen. In order to see your actual stream, you need to click preview stream and then you'll have everything show up. You can see here, it's up in the corner, it's a little small, I'm not really happy with that. If I want to move this around or resize it, I need to click edit scene. Select my source, or click on it over here, and you'll see this little red box appears around it. And then I can drag it around to move it. I can resize it. Uh, it'll snap to edges. If I don't want it to snap to edges, I can hold Control, and it won't snap to edges anymore. Uh, if I want to resize it and ignore the aspect ratio, I can hold Shift. And then you can right-click on it. You have a few options. Just again, you can move it up, down, to the top or bottom, rename it. You can center it. You can reset the size and you can fit it to the size of the screen. And you have hotkeys for those where reset is control R, uh, fit to screen is control F, and to center it is control C. You know when you're done every editing everything, you can click edit scene, that'll lock it so you can't accidentally resize it or move it, and you can turn off your preview if you don't need to see it anymore. The other sources you can add are images. You can do a slide so of images which will fade between them. You can add global sources which I'll cover in a second. You can add text, you can add a video capture device such as a webcam or a capture card or anything that outputs a direct show virtual camera such as DX Story or you can use game capture. Game capture is what you're going to want to use if you're doing a full screen game. Uh, because of how they work, you can't do a monitor capture or a window capture on them. You need to use either the game capture in OBS or use a program like DX Story to hook into it and then add DX Story as a video device. Now if you're going to use uh, a video device like a webcam or if you can use game capture it's definitely recommended you set it up as a global source global sources are always loaded in OBS they don't get loaded when this scene does they're always ready to go so for a webcam this is very useful if you have two scenes where one doesn't have the webcam and another one does when you transfer to the scene that does have the webcam there's gonna be a one or two second load time for the webcam to start up and actually show up. If you have it as a global source, it'll be already loaded, and as soon as you switch to that scene, the webcam will already be there. So for setting up global sources, you just open up this list, you click add, you have the exact same menu, you add it, you have all the quick name. You have all the same options as before. You can choose whatever you need to. It'll show up in this list, and then to add it, you just right click, add global source, and it'll be right there in the list. So just clear that out really quick. Once you've done that, you know you set up all your sources, you know your preview, make sure it all looks good. Once you're done that, you're ready to go and get started with your settings. So you open up the settings window, you can choose your language if you have a primary one besides English, and you have your settings profile which saves all the settings that you put here. You can name it whatever you want, just punch in the name and click rename, 
if you want to add a new one just type in the name of the new one and click add you'll have a new profile with all the settings that you had before and if you want to remove one you just click remove so for setting up your settings you can go to encoding what you're gonna to need to figure out first is what your upload speed is uh, speedtest.net gives me a upload speed of 2 megabits per second now that is my peak upload speed that is not necessarily what I can do constantly over a sustained period of time so you're usually gonna to want to undercut whatever max you get and you also want to go a little bit under as well if you're playing any multiplayer games so that you don't have any lag because you don't want your stream using up every single bit of bandwidth that you have so I have a speed of, a max speed of 2000 according to speedtest.net so I usually like to use something around 1500 so I'm gonna set that to 1500 and then for buffer size just set that the same as your bitrate. There are a lot of complex technical reasons. Some people, they'll tell you to set this to double what it is. They'll tell you to set this to 500 less. But I highly recommend you to set it to the same as the max bitrate. It's a bunch of really complicated stuff. But trust me on this one and just set your buffer size to the same as your max bitrate. Your quality balance depends. It basically tries to strike a balance between high quality and maintaining that quality in high motion scenes. If you set this to 10 and you have a really high resolution and uh, a really low bitrate, uh, your high motion scenes are going to get extremely pixelated and not look that great. So generally you want to keep this around 7 or 8 as your balance and that will usually look pretty good. I personally use 8 and I think that's a good number. For codec you can choose AAC or MP3, that's completely up to you. AAC is, I believe, uh, really good for streaming. Uh, Bitrate, usually good at 128. If you don't have the best internet speeds in the world, you can drop this down to, say, 96. If you have a uh, really great network connection and you want to appeal to all the audiophiles that watch your stream who have a really nice pair of headphones, you can set this down to 320, and that'll be pretty good. But usually 128, pretty good setting. Broadcast settings is where you choose where you want to stream. If you just want to record a file, you can change mode up here to file output only and you just punch in the file here. If you're going to live stream, you just pick live stream for your mode. If you want to save to a file as well as live stream, you can also choose to do that by checking off save to file. For your streaming service, you can either choose a custom one, which is what you will use if you want to stream to Ustream or live stream. You can find a guide on the forums called the Quick Start Guide, which has a little blurb about how you can set things up for Ustream, live stream, and I think there's one for YouTube. If you're going to stream to twitch.tv, own TV, uh, you just choose that there. In the FMS URL, you'll have a list of servers that you can use. Ashburn VA Secondary is the best one for me. For Stream Key, this is a special password that basically lets you stream to your channel with an application. So for Twitch, you're going to go to twitch.tv slash broadcast, and on the right here there will be a button for Show Key. You click that, and it'll show up this little box here with your actual Stream Key. Make sure you highlight it and don't double click it. If you double click, it might not look like it, but you'll be copying a, a trailing space, and that won't actually work when you try to stream. So all you gotta do is copy that and paste it there. If you're using own.tv from the home page, just click your name up here once you're logged in. Click my live streams. You'll get this page here with a list of all your streams, which you'll probably only have one for most people. You click edit. And from that page, you'll be able to click show and it'll show your stream key right here. Again, just copy that and paste it in. Make sure you don't double click or you're gonna get a trailing space. Once you set all of that all up, you can set up auto reconnect, usually on, usually fine at 10. You can set up a delay if you need to, if you're streaming uh, any games that need to make sure that your streamers are behind so they're not seeing anything that they shouldn't be. You know, if you want to do a five minute delay that's 300 seconds, you can leave it at zero, whatever you want. Dashboard link, putting something in here will make a link appear on the main OBI interface, OBS interface. And whatever you use there, for Twitch, you have a very generic dashboard link which is just twitch.tv slash broadcast slash dashboard all you have to do is copy that into OBS and a little dashboard button will appear you click that it'll open it up and you're on your dashboard uh, for own.tv it's a little bit different because your actual user is in your dashboard link uh, I'm not too sure on where to grab it but I know I've been to it I'm just uh, I don't use owned too much so I'm not completely sure on where that is but that is how you would set up your dashboard link Video, you generally want to set this to what your monitor's resolution is and then use this to set what your actual stream is setting as. So I stream at 720p, so I'm going to set my base resolution as my actual monitor of 1920 by 1080 and then downscale to 1280 by 720 That's what will actually get encoded and actually streamed. And for the best quality, that's what you want to do. You want to set your actual resolution and then downscale it. If I set this down to 1280 by 720 
and then you know add my 1920 by 1080 game here and then resize it to fit it's not going to look as good as if i had this at 1920 by 1080 and then downscaled it using this downscale option fps usually good at 30 if you have a great computer and network connection you can set that to 60 and again if you're going to use monitor capture make sure you check off disable air out startup and restart obs so that it will do that uh, for audio you can choose your microphone if you're going to use one this would be mine right here you can set up a push to talk key which for me would be mouse 3 that's what i use in mumble and ventrilo you can set up a hotkey to mute and unmute your microphone you can set a hotkey to mute and unmute your desktop and if you need to you can force your microphone to mono mic boost will let you uh, increase the volume of your microphone by up to 20 times uh, if you have a particularly quiet microphone always remember that this will also increase the volume of every any background noise which i have my mic boost at one right now i have a fairly nice mic and you can hear me uh, there's nothing else going on in my house really it's the dead of night but you can definitely hear my computer underneath my desk so usually you don't really need to change your mic boost uh, unless you have a really quiet mic advanced uh, please don't touch anything here unless you absolutely 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 know what you're doing by changing these things if you want to stream at something higher than 60 fps you can check it off here uh, generally you don't really need to do that because a lot of people don't even have monitors that can show more than 60 fps and that's also a lot more taxing uh, on your processor and on your network CPU preset a lot of people seem to like to change this there is a dialog box that pops up saying don't change this unless you know exactly what you're doing and they click yes anyway they change it to ultra fast and then their stream is super pixelated and they come asking for help why is my stream super pixelated it's because they changed this to ultra fast then they set this down to something like slow and they're just like oh my god my processor is at 100 percent why is this program so bad and it's because you have your processor set to encode slow and that's going to take a lot of processing power on your processor's end. Leave this at very fast, don't touch it, don't touch anything else unless you absolutely know what you're doing. Please, for the love of God, stay out of advanced, unless you are advanced and are very, very sure of what you're doing. A lot of people like to turn on custom encoder settings and set VBV-max rate, which is exactly what you're setting right here. So you're just setting redundant setting and overriding what's in OBS, which you really shouldn't be doing anyway. So don't touch advanced unless you absolutely know what you're doing. Once you're done setting up all your settings, you just click apply, okay, you're ready to go. If you have your stream key set up properly and everything, you hit start streaming and you should go live. When you are live, you have a little counter down here that shows your uptime. You can see how many frames you've dropped. If you're dropping frames, that means the encoding settings you have set, your bitrate is too high and you can't actually maintain the connection you have set. So you're gonna wanna drop that down. FPS, you can see if your stream is actually keeping up to what you have it set to. And this little indicator over here will show a rough estimate of your actual speed. This is not completely accurate. It's just a rough guess of what you're outputting as far as uh, kilobits per second. And this little green indicator will tell you the quality of your network connection. So if this drops down to yellow, it means you're either on the fringe of dropping frames or you probably will be dropping the odd frame. If this gets down to red, you are definitely dropping frames. And seeing yellow or red here basically means that you want to reduce your bit rate uh, in the encoding settings. Usually it's good to go in steps of 100. So if I'm at 1500 right now and I was dropping a bunch of frames, I might drop this down to 1400 and make sure that I change my buffer size as well. Uh, that should basically cover everything. If you ever have any problems, you can always post on the forums. We'll usually ask for a log file and to get to those, you just open settings up here, click open log folder, and they'll be arranged and named by their date. And then you just open the one for the stream that it, uh, you were having trouble with and post that up on something like Pastebin uh, for us to look at. Make sure you close OBS before you open a log. I actually don't think you can even open a log anymore without closing OBS. So just make sure you do that because otherwise all the information won't be there. Uh, you can go to help to visit the website very easily and you can open contents which also has its own little guide for setting things up. I hope this covers everything you need. Uh, really quickly, one more thing I almost forgot to mention is if you ever need to mute your microphone, you can just click the icon here. If you ever need to mute your speakers, click the icon here. You can change the volume easily, change the volume easily there. And that's basically it. Uh, if you ever have problems with your preview not showing, make sure you have enable view on. Otherwise, you won't be seeing anything. Uh, a lot of, I know a few people have run into that issue where if they weren't able to see what was going on. It's because enable view somehow got unchecked. So always make sure it has that check mark. That should be everything, and I hope this helped you. So good luck streaming with open broadcaster software, and thank you for watching.